y equals 2x minus 1 on x plus 2. It's a rational function because on the top and the bottom you've got some polynomials and we're going to try and understand what happens here. So you remember I said before we're looking for shape, intercept, intercepts I should say if appropriate, asymptotes and also a point for scale if it's needed. Okay. Now one of the things that's interesting here which is different to exponentials and logs like we looked at yesterday is that the shape is kind of going to be defined by where your intercepts and your asymptotes are. So that's where I'm going to begin. Uh, we're going to find x intercepts first and um, at this point you're kind of like I know how to do this right. Um, I let y equal 0 and in this case if y equals 0 um, I'm going to want the numerator up here to also be 0. I, I don't care what the denominator is. There's no value you can put in the denominator that makes y equal 0. What you need is for the numerator to be 0 uh, and then once you have the numerator be 0, 0 divided by anything is 0. Um, except for 0, don't divide by 0. So to get that value I want 2x minus 1 to equal 0 so I'm going to get 2x equals 1 so x equals a half. There is my x-intercept. Same idea with the y-intercept I'm going to let x equal 0 so in this case I get y equals all my x terms are going to disappear so this guy here vanishes away, this guy here vanishes away and you just get left with minus 1 over 2. Done. There are my intercepts. So intercepts check. Now I want to think about asymptotes. So with my asymptotes um, I'm expecting there's going to be a horizontal asymptote and there may be multiple vertical asymptotes but in this case we have a, a fairly simple graph to begin. So I'm going to think about the vertical one first. Remember from before, this is my excuse to look at Ian McKellen again because he's awesome, vertical asymptotes come from domain discontinuities, places where the graph breaks. So in our context, with rational functions, what we're saying is, well, the denominator is not allowed to be zero. So find me the place where that happens and then you're not allowed to go there. Okay? So let's have a look. Here's the denominator, x plus 2. And um, I'm not allowed to make it zero. So if I do let it equal zero, what you're going to find is this equation right here is the place you're not allowed to go. This is the vertical asymptote. Okay? That's it. What about the horizontal asymptote? Well, I'm going to think about what happens when you put in really large values of x, both on the positive side and the negative side. Now, as an example, and there's more than one way to do this, but I'm going to just give you the, um, the simplest way. Um, let's just think about a couple of values, like say x equals 100. If x were equal to 100, what would you get for your y value? Like this is a, a large value of x. I would get y equals um, 200 minus 1, so that's 199 divided by uh, 102. 102. Okay. Now my calculator is going to tell me that 199 divided by 102, um, it's 1.95. That's what my calculator tells me. Okay. Now what if I went bigger? If I went to x equals 1000, what would happen? Well y, if I go ahead and do the same substitution, it's going to become 2 lots of 1000, that's 2000, take away 1, so that's 1999. And then I'm going to divide by, substitute again, 1,000 plus 2, 1,002. Now when I go reach for my calculator again, instead of 1.95, which was the previous value, my calculator is now telling me it's 1.995, okay? So I'm approaching something, right? 1.95, 1.995, what am I approaching? And the answer is, I'm clearly approaching 2 and I'm approaching it from underneath 2, right? I'm just beneath 2 and I'll get closer and closer to that. Now you can go ahead and you can test some um, large negative values as well. Um, x equals negative 100 or negative 1000. I can tell you right now you're also going to be approaching 2 but you'll approach it from the other side. Look I'll just prove it just for the sake of it. Let's do it with y equals 1000, uh, sorry x equals negative 1000. Got both things wrong there. Um, when I go ahead and do the substitution, negative uh, 1000. So this is negative 2000 minus 1. So negative 2001. And then on the denominator, what am I getting? Negative 1,000 plus 2, this is uh, 998, right? Now, even without me evaluating this in the calculator, you can see this is close to 2, but it's uh, going to be, hold on a second, what have I done? No, there's a minus down the bottom there. Um, those negatives are going to cancel, and if you, okay, just for the sake of it, right? You've got 2,001 divided by 998, and sure enough, um, you're just going to be slightly above 2. I've got 2.005 on my calculator. Okay? So therefore, I'm concluding all of this by saying I have a horizontal asymptote at y 
equals two. There's my horizontal asymptote, there's my vertical one. Okay, I'm ready to put this onto uh, a Cartesian plane now. So let's go ahead and draw one, make this a bit thicker. And I'm just gonna take all those bits and pieces and add them onto my graph. So, got some arrows here. All right, what were we saying? So, we started with our intercepts, didn't we? So we said intercepts were x equals a half. Let's put some spots like uh, one and two here, which made x equals a half right there. I better label it as well, a half. And then I said y equals negative a half for my y-intercept. So that's gonna be, if I call that one, negative one, negative two, it's gonna be about there. So this is negative a half. So I've got my intercepts. Um, and then I also had my uh, vertical asymptote. So that was, I think we said, x equals negative two. So following my same scale, negative one, negative two. So here comes my vertical asymptote, like so, make sure you label that guy. And then I've got a horizontal asymptote as well, which we just determined was y equals two. So following my scale, one, two, draw my line all the way across, and then going in the other direction as well. Okay, so these are all of the bits and pieces. How am I going to thread the needle so everything fits together? Well, let's grab another color here. And let's look in the bottom right hand corner because I've got more information there. I've got intercepts and stuff, right? I'm gonna have to go from uh, this part of the graph here up to here. And then remember, I'm approaching this asymptote from underneath, okay? So I'm predicting it's something like, like this, right? You can see I'm approaching that asymptote from the bottom. And then to complete that part or that branch of the graph, you can see I'm now gonna approach the vertical asymptote and I'm gonna drop like a rock. You can try this out by putting in values that are close to x equals negative two, like x equals negative 1.9 or x equals negative 1.99. If you put those in, which are sort of x values around here, um, you're going to get y values that are negative and very large, okay? Now in the same way, I'm going to think about what happens on the other side. Um, I've got to be somewhere over here. Now, I know I can't be around here because there's no x-intercept there, right? That was the first thing I found. So I'm going to have to be somewhere up here because I've got these two asymptotes that I've got to stay between. And I'm noticing that I'm going to be above the asymptote because like we saw here, uh, sorry, I said, yeah, above the asymptote, um, I had this value here of... Um, uh, 2.005 from memory, so it's just above, okay? So therefore, I'm getting a shape a bit like this on the left and right uh, over there, okay? So this is my graph of my rational function. It's a bit weird and messy, but that's it. You can see how I put together my intercepts, my asymptotes, and made a shape out of that. Do I need a point for scale? I don't here because I have enough intercepts that tell me this is unambiguously uh, y equals 2x minus 1 on x plus 2. Okay?